Hi and welcome to the channel. I'm Tim and this is Ron Tall. If you're brand new here, welcome to the Ron Tall family. I'm really glad that you're here and you found us on YouTube. Now, I post running videos every week. Running shoe uh, reviews and comparisons and shoe battles and all kinds of gear uh, types of videos and videos like this one that has to do with training. So if you're a running geek or a nerd like I am, consider subscribing to the channel and don't forget to click the notification bell so you'll be notified each time that I upload new content. Now on today's video, I'm gonna be setting up a brand new marathon training plan that's gonna help me prepare to run both the Chicago and the New York Marathon. They're only about a month apart. Uh, so it's gonna be a one plan to, to prepare me for two marathons. Now. If you're a current subscriber or you watch some of the videos that had to do with the Boston Marathon or Detroit Marathon or even the Bayshore Marathon, uh, you know that I like to use the Garmin Intermediate Marathon Training Plan. Uh, and since I've run that for a year, it's time to do something new. <laughs> I want to change it up, uh, bring maybe a, a new fresh uh, spark into my training, a little bit more excitement because like I said, I've, I've been there, done that for a year. It's been really good to me. And so I'm not changing because the, the plan wasn't successful because it was, I, I've, I've seen uh, great success with the plan. I'm really happy with the results. Uh, I ran, a, th ran three marathons last year and I ran Boston Marathon uh, qualifying times in each one of them. So if you're asking yourself why change, well, it's just to add a little spice uh, to life and to see what other plans might have to offer. Now I'm sticking with Garmin. There's a lot of marathon training programs that are out there that are absolutely wonderful. Uh, you know, Hal Higdon, I think Jeff Galloway, some of those plans. Um, the Garmin plan is absolutely free, and I love the fact that it loads up to my watch. So that's kind of why I stick with it. And like I said, it's been working for me, so I don't see any real need to change. So I'm going to walk you through how to set up your own Garmin training plan, whether it's for 5K, 10K, half marathon, marathon, it can all be found in the same place. Or even if you wanted to pick up a, a different plan, uh, maybe for uh, cycling or something like that, you can find that here too. So if you go to connect.garmin.com, I've already logged in, and then you're going to go all the way over to the left-hand side of the screen. And there you're going to see a bunch of menu choices that pop up when you error over there. You're going to go down to where it says training and planning. Click on that, and it's going to open up a whole another subset of uh, choices that you have there. The second one down is training plan. So that's what we're going to click on. Okay, so then they pop up, and then you get all kinds of training plans here that you have to choose from. Now, of course, I'm going to running, but you do have cycling. Uh, I'm not sure what this unbound gravel plan is. I haven't looked at that, but that sounds interesting. Uh, or triathlon. Now, I'm going to click on running because that's what I want to do. The first ones that come up right at the top of the page are their Garmin Coaches plans, which means that they're adaptive plans. It, now, they only go to half marathon, so they don't go into the marathon level or distance. If they did, I'd probably give it a try. But the biggest difference between the Garmin Coach plan and the self-guided plan is that they are adaptive. So it's going to respond to how you're responding to the training. So the, the workouts that they schedule for you will be different from one person to the next. And it's going to go based on how well you do in the, in the workouts that you've completed, how you rate yourself. You always rate yourself at the end of every workout, you know, how you felt, did you feel weak or strong or, or what have you. So uh, so that, that's what the, go the coaches' plans are all about. They're pretty cool. And I did, I've run those for the half marathon a number of times, and I found them to be really worth it, too, if you want to use that. I think it's, I think it's a good uh, use of your time. So, but then you, if you scroll down a little bit, you, it's going to bring you to their self-guided plans. Okay, so that's what I've been using uh, for the marathon. But you can see that they have 5K ones that you can choose from. They've got 10K, uh, half marathon, and you can go based on heart rate or you can, uh, or not. Now, I have used the intermediate plan, as I mentioned. Now, in the past, that means I committed myself to, you know, five workouts per week for 16 weeks. Uh, I'm not. I'm not going to try the heart rate. I have thought about that. I thought you know that might be a really interesting approach to take to try to marathon training because I know a number of you guys use that to a uh, great success. But I'm just going to bump up to where it says advanced. So this is the plan that I've chosen uh, to to use to help me prepare. So this is how I'm going to spend the next 16 weeks or four months of my life as guided right here. Now to set it up, and I got to give kudos uh, to one of our subscribers who made a comment um, on one of my previous videos that when you're setting it up, if you change from start date to finish date, you can just punch in the, the date that you're going to run your marathon and it'll calculate back when six, the start of the 16 weeks should be. 
I've run this, used this plan so many times, and I never thought that to look there for that option. I've always done it myself manually. So kudos, thank you for that. I call that a pro tip right there. That's a, definitely a time saver. So, okay, so I got to punch in October 8th because that is the Chicago Marathon. So 10, 8, 23, and I'm going to hit schedule. And it should come up here. Uh, there it is. So June 19th is the official start date or the kickoff for this marathon training program. It's going to run through to October 8th. So perfect. We're good to go. Again, it's 16 weeks. I'm going to just scroll down here a little bit so you can kind of get a preview of what that looks like. And let's see, I got to scroll down quite a bit. There we go. We got them all in frame. So it has uh, on the 19th, it's going to be an easy run and then some body weight exercises. On the 20th, it'll be an easy run and some intervals. So it'll be two on that day. 21st cross training, 22nd easy run, and then later in the day threshold. Then either swimming uh, the following day or yoga. I'm going to do yoga. If you guys have followed me on Strava, you know that I, I, I like to do the yoga. I'm an older runner and I got to keep things loose and limber and as strong as I can uh, because I'm not getting younger <laughs> each day. That's for sure. OK, so on the 24th, then is an easy run. And then later in the day, that'll be a fartlek run. And then 25th is a long run. So. For those of you who've been following along uh, and have uh, been with me through those different intermediate training programs that I've used, there are some big differences there. So you can already see it in, in the layout of that week one, but that almost looks overwhelming you know, to, as we talk about that week one because there are a lot of two-a-days. And there are a few that go through there, but maybe not as many as you might think. So what I did to see if this was gonna be the right plan for me or if it's something that I wanted to try to tackle, obviously, now, I'm still coming off that ankle injury. That tendonitis isn't completely healed yet, so I want to make sure that I don't overdo it. So I might have to pivot from time to time, and you know maybe substitute that second run for uh, you know a, a session, a speed or a interval session, maybe on my stationary bike or something like that. So I'm always reserve the right to pivot uh, depending on how my body is feeling. But I wanted to give this plan a try because I'm just excited to try something new to see where it's going to take me. Okay, so I thought I'd just go, kind of go quickly through the differences between the two plans in, in terms of the workouts. And you might recall that just, I don't know, a couple of days ago, I posted my final thoughts and results uh, video of the marathon training plan, the intermediate plan that I used in Boston, where I talked about all of the different types of workouts that they had me do and the mileage that I ran and pace and all that kind of good stuff. Well, I'm gonna just look at the different workouts. Uh, to share with you some of the differences. So for the intermediate plan, for easy run, they had me do 16, which was 22%. Speed workouts were 30, 30 speed sessions. For, so that was 42% of my time. Long run was, of course, 16, one a week, which was 22%. And the recovery runs was 10, which is about 14%. So in total, they had me do 72 workouts, okay? For the advanced plan, for easy runs, it goes down to 13, which now that surprised me a little bit because I was expecting, honestly, I my first thought was it's going to have me probably do a lot more easy workouts, easy runs. But no, nope, it goes down to just 13, so 11% of my time. Speed work, 37. So now we did add in basically a speed session every two weeks. So um, not not like overwhelming, you know, to add in seven. Out, so because we're already doing 30, so now we're up to 37. But that percentage come down to 32% instead of 42%. So the percent of time that we spend running is actually coming down for speed sessions, but the number of sessions is going up. And then for the long run, of course, that's 16. That's the same. That's a wash. So we went down in the easy runs. We went up seven in the speed works. Uh, long run's the same. Recovery run. This is where the big change is from the intermediate to the advanced uh, plan. And I, I wasn't expecting to see, see that, I guess. I'm not sure what I was expecting, but this isn't what I thought it might be. Honestly, I thought I'd be even heavier um, loaded up with speed work sessions, uh, but that's not really the case. So recovery runs, we went from 10 to the advanced uh, program, 49. <laughs> 49 that's all that's all a lot that's up 39 workouts uh that are added in for recovery runs so recovery runs are you know 
quite slow and usually not more than about 30 to 40 minutes. So that's that was that, that to me was really interesting. Uh, so if the recovery runs now make up 43% of the advanced program, whereas before it was 14%. So heavy, heavy on recovery runs in the advanced plan. So I'm excited. I'm, if you can't tell, I'm really excited to give it get started with it. Of course, it's going to kick off on the 19th, which I think I don't have a calendar in front of me, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be a Monday. Um, that we'll be we'll be starting this uh, plan and so hopefully you guys will come along for this journey i will post regular updates i think the last time i tried to post at least once a week i might have missed it here or there once once or twice but for the most part i try to keep you guys updated i might do it a little bit differently you know we got a lot to talk about i've got i got lots of products uh, to review here on the channel and I'm, I'm getting in more running shoes to review on the channel uh, you know, I, I pre-ordered the uh, New Balance Super Comp Trainer V2. So the second version of that shoe that's coming out. It's hopefully here uh, and maybe in a couple weeks it should arrive. So I'm excited to do that. I still have a lot of shoe reviews to catch up on um, that I didn't get to earlier. So you might see me picking up shoes that, you know, came out six months ago or eight months ago or something along those lines but but what i'm doing is picking up shoes that i know i'm going to be able to run the miles up on or that i want to run the miles up on because I, I do buy all this my own shoes that i review on the channel it can get pretty expensive to buy shoes that i only run you know 25 or 50 miles or something and set it on the shelf I, uh, so i'm being a little bit more frugal and um you know trying to choose the shoes that i know i'm going to get my money's worth out of oh and I did just buy a second pair of the Adios Pro 3s uh, to have as a fresh pair because they're uh, they're definitely in the contention for you know running the Chicago Marathon. I enjoyed the Adios, the first Adios Pro 3s, not at first, <laughs> that's what I was trying to say, because of the upper and the pain. But once I figured out how to run it, I'm, I, I loved it. I've always loved the ride of those. Um, they're they just they're so they're so comfortable and uh, they're they're snappy they're quick and they fit my gait pretty well. It was the upper that I had trouble with. And once I figured that out, man, I was good to go. And I ran the miles up on the on the pair that I had. Too far to really use them for a marathon at this point. But I you know I still got a few more miles that I can put in for training. Now who knows? Maybe I'll end up putting these into a training rotation if I find something else that's even better. I also like the new Vaporfly Vaporfly Three that. That's a definite contender as well. It's lightweight, quick, all that kind of good stuff. But we'll talk about that more later on down the road. All right, so, hey, thanks for making it to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed making it for you. As always, run tall, run strong, be kind to one another. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Again, run tall again.